Greetings to you. Welcome to Bodybuilding and Bible with a Bear. We are going to tackle a chapter in the book of Job. If you think you have suffered in your life, guess again. If I think I've suffered the whatever I've had in my life, I, I, I got nothing to complain about. Job suffered. Job was put to the test, and he came out to be a representative for all of history of what a godly man put under the fire can represent to us all through faithfulness, to perseverance, to being steadfast, and most importantly, faith in God Most High, in Elohim, Jehovah. Yahweh. Job was an aristocrat of his era, whatever that era might be, whether it before the flood, after the flood, we're not really sure. A lot of good commentators have a lot of good points, but the real point is they don't have a point. They can only guess, like me, a dumb bear. And doesn't really matter when it happened, it happened. And he had money, he had slaves, slavery did go on. It wasn't looked down upon. That's what happened. That's the way it was. Everybody had to work. He, they didn't have large segments of the population on welfare and food stamps and free free social programs. Everybody had to work. And if you refuse to work, then in that day they put you to forced work. And they had slavery. Job had a lot of slaves. He had a small army. And it's represented in his, his army of cattle, camels, donkeys, sheep, Goats, all of his livestock, hundreds and hundreds. He was a great man, but God is about to break him so that the rest of us in history, that we're going through difficult times in our life, we can look back at a man who will suffer more than any of us and he made it. So if you get anything from our study in the book of Job, I want you to understand this. I'm not a great man. You're not a great man or a great woman, or whoever you are listening. We're just little people. And at the best, like the church in Philadelphia, we have a little faith, a little strength. And you know what? That's all you need is pure faith, pure strength to love Christ and to want to be with him and to enjoy him forever. Job didn't have all the information that we have, but he knew this. He knew God was there. He knew he loved God and knew he wanted to please God and obey him. And that's what's important. He had faith and he kept it through to the end. I hope I can be like Job. I don't want to go through what Job went through. But I hope I can be like Job in the little petty trials that I have here on this earth, on Terra Earth, for my brief stay here on this spinning planet. So here we go. The book of Job, chapter 1. And no, we don't have an animal in the bear's gym today. We have a mascot. And um, so he's going to make a little noise. So... Please bear with us. Uh, 
I'm kind of an indulgent father to him, and I pretty much, you know, if he wants to chew on stuff and have a ball, hey, so what? It's like a, a young lad, a young bear in the gym. He wants to run around and lift a lot of weights and keep, you know, pumping iron all day long. Why do I want to stop that? An, an excited young man. He is an excited young man, and he, he makes a little noise, but uh, I love him. And as the years go by, I'm sure that you will love him too. That's a boy. He is. Okay. Okay, chapter 1 of Job. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. In other words, he rejected it. People were telling a dirty joke. He walked away. People offer him whiskey booze. He walked away. Beautiful women came up to him to entice him. He walked away. He eschewed evil. People offered him bribes to make a political statement against a good, godly, moral ethic. He would refuse the bribe. He eschewed evil. He rejected evil. Verse 2. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, yes, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she-donkeys, and a very great household. So this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. So you see that? He was an aristocrat. He was a plantation owner of magnificent scale. He was a godly plantation owner. He treated his slaves well. You work well, they were provided for well. He protected them. He was a good man. Verse 4. His sons went and feasted in their houses, and every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And it was so, when the days of their feasting was gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Verse 6. So we have the, the groundwork. It's kind of like a good book. Or a good movie. They don't just burst into the action and then you have to catch up later of what in the world's going on here. Okay, God just laid the preface of their life, of the, the foundation of where they're at, what they're doing, and what, what's right and wrong and what their standard is. A good foundation for a book. And now, there's a change in the scenes or is it like the chapter break? And then we can start back up. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also amongst them. Kind of interesting. Satan, the demonic angels, those that were fallen, and, you know, obviously the, the regular angels, the righteous angels, they had access to the spiritual realm. Satan still has that. One day he'll be cast out from that spiritual realm to the earth during the tribulation period on the earth. But still at this point, Satan no longer has access to the third heavens where our heavenly father dwells, but he is into the spiritual heavens in the spiritual realm where the Lord Jesus somehow has a throne where he makes decisions and gives rulings and so forth, somehow. Now, I don't believe that's changed from the time of Job till now, except that Jesus has the keys of death and hell, and he, he is the epitome of God. God has revealed himself to us through Jesus Christ the Lord. And Jesus Christ the Lord is the Son of God. He is the Creator God. And he now is in the spiritual realm, and the angelic beings, even the fallen angels, somehow, for some reason why, they have some access to the Lord in the spiritual, the second heavens, the second spiritual heavens. I don't understand why, but 
they do. Satan does. Verse 7, The Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. The Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in all the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job, Job fear God for naught? Hast not thou made an hedge about him, and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. And that's true. God had blessed them. Sometimes God does bless his people, his followers, abundantly. Sometimes he doesn't. And sometimes he takes it all away to see what remains. To see if after all the hay and the, the stuff is burned away, What's left? And for Job, he had a lot left because he had his faith, and that's everything. Because that equals an eternal reward in the heavens forever. If you leave this earth and you have nothing but your faith in Jesus Christ, my friend, you leave this world a millionaire in the eternal realm. Verse 11. Put forth thy hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. Job never did that. The Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself shall thou put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. The Lord knew Job had what it took to become the representative to us all of a picture of suffering. The word of God is very clear that God will not put something before you that we cannot take. So when you find yourself overwhelmed, realize you just got to let go and let God, my friend. It means you're trying to take the burden too much to yourself. Just let go and let God submit yourself to him if you've got old skeletons in the closet you haven't cleaned out and burned, then it's time. Get it out before the Lord and let it go all to him. And that's what Job is about to have happen to him as our representative of what it means to suffer and come through like gold. I can't never claim coming through everything looking like gold. But I'll tell you, that's my, my wish, my try. But Job did that. He lost everything. And he came out like gold. Because he is our, aside from Christ, Christ is the epitome, but Christ is God. Job was just like us. And he is our picture of suffering. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them. And the Sabaeans fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only have escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, the fire of God has fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. When you see troubles kind of happening, kind of boom, 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 realize there's a spiritual war in process, beginning, happening, or about to happen. So just pull back and trust in the Lord Jesus. Say, something's happening here, Lord. Just give me the strength to move through it all. Verse 17, while he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, the Chaldeans made out three bands 
fell upon the camels and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men and the women, and they are dead, and only I am escaped alone to tell thee. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said, Naked came he myself. Naked came I. Naked came me, O Lord, into this world from my mother's womb. Naked. Empty. Deplete of anything I could gather on earth. Shall I return thither to thee. That's his prayer. That's awesome. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And in all this, all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. I tell you what, we've all charged God foolishly. Bad things happen. Things don't go the way we want them to. There's a job change that we don't want. Our children didn't grow up the way we hoped they would. Our finances are become shambled because of something we weren't really even prepared for. Or a health or a death in the family. We want to say, God, why did you do this? Job sinned not, and nor did he charge God foolishly. Job was a good man. Job was a good man. I'll tell you this, you don't run into many people whose names are Job, or who've named their children, one of their sons, Job. Job was a great man. Job was a great man. So we're going to learn a lot as we study through the book of Job. And all of us will do well to hang in there when we go through the little petty trials of this life. Because in comparison to what Job suffered and came out in the end, blessed by God, we have nothing to complain about only to bless God and th be thankful for his mercy, right? So Job will continue on again next time. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed, and I'm going to enjoy the study through the book of Job. God bless you. See you next time.